I have 14 slides, and usually it's one slide per minute. So God willing, we'll be out soon. Um, okay. So in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Uh, it's very hard to talk about motherhood because I haven't experienced it myself, but <laughs> mainly because uh, it's a type, I guess you can say, of a mystery. Um, even when you reflect on the Holy Mother of God, St. Mary, the mother of us all, um, there is so much about her that we don't know and we don't understand. And maybe when we get to heaven, we'll understand more of the mysteries of what she experienced and what she knew and what she taught. Um, so she gave more of an inspiration on how to reflect on the concept of mothers, especially in the lives of the saints. I, I don't feel it's proper actually to start with her because I think we'll, move, we'll end with her maybe in a few years. Um, <clears throat> but I, I decided to pick or to select one of the saints who was a, a good reflection of motherhood despite the circumstances, despite the family, despite what she endured in the beginning. She exited this life victorious. So that the Saint, uh, Saint Monica. Um, <clears throat> uh, I'll briefly tell about her story, and then I'll end with some words from St. John Chrysostom. Uh, so the story is about seven slides, <laughs> and St. John Chrysostom is about five or six. Okay? So she was a saint in the fourth century. She was Megan to, married to a pagan, so he was not a good husband. Um, he had a short temper. He was living an immoral life. He didn't believe. Um, even uh, her mother-in-law, um, at first she didn't like her, but she won over the first person she went over was her mother-in-law by being gentle. Um, <clears throat> uh, unlike many of the women at that time, St. Monica was never um, beaten by her husband. Some people say in the story of, of her that her husband was like this, but she said that her husband never raised his hand against her because she was always held her tongue. She set a guard over her mouth in his presence. But anyway, they had three children, um, and even though she was Christian, her husband did not allow her to baptize them. So that was like one of the first major struggles. As a mother, she knows what's needed for her children, but she could not give it to them. Even sometimes we feel this way, um, whether we want our kids to go to the best schools or we want something that's best for them, but we can't give it to them. Um, so it was a source of pain for her that her husband would not allow her children uh, to be baptized. <clears throat> she worried about all of them, but one in particular. Um, he, he, as he grew older and older, um, he began straying more from the faith despite what she taught him. Um, even to the point where he began to live with someone um, and even had an illegitimate son um, from from the union. Um, so you can see how much sometimes we say, oh, our, our children are so bad, but uh, this this son seemed lost. Okay, um, She offered up what her response, she offered up constant prayers and tears for her son that had the effect of converting her husband to Christ before his death. Um, <clears throat> so just her prayers led to the conversion of her husband. Um, so no matter how bad your husband is, <laughs> There's hope. <laughs> Just pray for him. Um, anyway, uh, she, she had a teenage son who continued in sin, like I said. Not only was he living with someone, um, but he he began to live a life following the heretics. Um, and uh, his her dream was for him to be patient and gentle. Um, uh, so I, when I say that, she had a dream <laughs> after she was prayed fervently. She had a dream that she was told to be patient and gentle with her son and not to lose hope. Oh, something happened. Um, nevertheless, she went to the bishop. She went with tears asking uh, for uh, help in dealing with her son. Um, and the bishop uh, simply told her, don't worry. So she had reassurance in her prayers. She had reassurance um, in 
her uh, confession and in her um, uh, the guidance, the spiritual guidance that she requested from. So even though everyone sometimes does not give what we need or God doesn't immediately answer our prayers, she had comfort and consolation. And she continued on the path knowing, you know, sometimes if our children are disobedient, we're harsh and sometimes we're merciful. Um, and sometimes it's confusing which, which side to show at what time. Um, but And it depends on many factors, as you know. And sometimes it even depends on what the child needs. So anyway, um, the guidance that she received from God was to be patient and merciful. So when she went to the bishop, the bishop said, Go on your way, God bless you, for it is not possible that the son of these tears should be lost. Um, so little by little, the son began to change. Um, he, uh, she went, she moved with him to Rome, um, and he was so caught up in his lecturing and teaching, um, he received an appointment to, to Milan where he met St. Ambrose and he was very impressed by his preaching, and the bishop had a great deal of respect for the mother and often congratulated the son on having such a good mother. Um, one day when he was reading the New Testament, um, a, vo a voice came to him, giving him guidance and direction. And little by little, he converted and he was baptized. Um, and uh, he became a great saint after that. Um, I won't speak much of his conversion, but you know the saint uh, was St. Augustine. Um, and because of her faith, uh, he was not only saved, but he became a teacher and a leader and a seat in the church. <clears throat> so just her model reminds us of the perseverance and persistence and faithfulness of one person in the fam family can transform others to the point, if God wills, um, for them to be um, not just okay, but amazing. Um, so I don't think we would have St. Augustine if there was no St. Monica. Um, she was a... a a great uh, saint who emulated the concept of prayer filled with hope, the, living the true gospel um, in practice and in, in, in faithfulness. And she trusted in God until the last breath that she didn't uh, do anything from her own uh, understanding until she got the blessing and direction from God. So that's part one. Um, so may, maybe many of us can take her as an example when we have difficulties in our service or difficulties in parenting or even difficulties at work or with others who so don't seem to get the idea, even if we are on the right track theologically or um, even we are in the right, like we still need to pray and wait and put our trust in God to transform the situation and maybe even to convert and transform the hearts and the minds of those whom we're dealing with. So that this, um, when you're put in that situation, I would encourage you to ask for her intercession um, because she has experienced a lot, um, good and bad. Um, so I'll conclude with just a quote from St. John Chrysostom. Sorry, the, the computer is taking... Uh, vacation today. Um, but <clears throat> So St. John Chrysostom, in, in general, he talks about husbands and wives, and he says, um, oh, vacation is over. Okay. So he says, um, let us learn to be restrained and gentle with everyone. He's talking to the husbands, especially our wives, and take particular care not to be too demanding, even if they chide us rightly or wrongly, because sometimes, you know, uh, when we do, when we uh, do something right or wrong, there's disagreements in the household. <clears throat> um, so the idea is, even though we're criticized or lectured, whether we do right or wrong, we have to be patient and restrained and gentle with our spouse. Um, <clears throat> then he says, but rather make it our sole concern to remove the cause of sadness and bring about a deep sense of peace at home. Um, so this is kind of more of a sermon to the husbands, <laughs> um, myself included. Um, 
so that the wife's attention may be devoted to her husband. So sometimes when there's disagreements, the the wife will say, "Well, I'm sorry." The husband will say, "Well, you're not. You need to pay more attention." Well, maybe it's something that we have to do first, you know, so that we can bring about peace. Um, so that the wife's attention is devoted to her husband, and the husband's attention is devoted to her wife. But if the husband does that first, see, so this is one way in which we as servants in, in our household have to lead by example, because it's not just about converting the other into convincing them what you think is right, it's by starting to do what is right, and then the other will be encouraged to fall. Um, then he continues by saying, may he be able to find refuge in her. We have to find refuge not only in God, but also in the loved ones that he gives to us, as in a port from all external confusion and disturbance, and find their utter consolation. So generally speaking, the mother is oftentimes the consolation of the whole family, or can be the consolation of the whole family. And so the husband seeks refuge in her, and the children seek refuge in her. Um, not to put more pressure, but you already know this, <laughs> as, as women really feel this. That, And that's why some people make fun of, um, you know the commandment to the bride on the, the wedding, where we say, do not frown his in presence, right? And some people get frustrated when they hear this and they say, oh, we're just old-fashioned. But I take it more of a symbolic teaching, is that the wife or the mother is the source of joy in the house. And uh, if she is like this, um, full of, of joy and wisdom and patience and, and respect, everyone finds refuge and joy in her. Um, <clears throat> so just a simple smile can transform the, the marriage, transform the, the, the wedding. Okay. Um, because, I mean, it's not just the smile itself. I mean, you could smile <laughs> and, like, have a knife behind your back, <laughs> right? Planning to do something. But this is the, 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 the inner joy that brings refuge to all who are in the house. Um, <clears throat> kind of like, you know, I was talking with a premarital couple the other day and we were saying just the idea of this port where you go out in the world and you suffer um, and you work hard and you have problems at work but then when you come home it's like a port it's like your refuge so you want to find refuge in in your in your home with your spouse with your children um, and the mother helps to create this atmosphere um, <clears throat> the father as well but oftentimes the Father needs it <laughs> from, anyway. Um, okay. So he says, strengthened by her support, he may succeed in withstanding assaults, all assaults against him. So she's also a sort, source of support and consolation in the family. Um, so we're not, we're not exhorting the mothers to be like this. We're actually thanking them for already being like this. Um, <clears throat> and then he continues by saying, you see, if she is discreet and restrained, not only Will she provide her husband with comfort? She will give evidence of her great usefulness, rendering everything light and easy for him, not allowing him to find difficulty either in external matters. Of course, this goes both ways, especially nowadays the, the, the mother is working um, oftentimes. And so uh, being discreet, being restrained, giving comfort to the other, and being useful. So you can be useful with, in, in many different ways. Um, Finally, he says, or two more slides, he says, instead, like a skilled pilot, she will transform the storm into calm. Just like the Lord, by one word, gave peace to the, the waves, um, <clears throat> she, by her skilled skillfulness, can transform the storm of this world, doesn't allow the storm of the world to enter the house. Right? By means of her particular wisdom and by the understanding she shows, she will provide him with deep comfort. And not only him, but again, all the children as well. Okay, he concludes by saying, wherever there is harmony and peace and a loving relationship between wife and husband, all good things come together there. And the couple will be safe from any stratagem, protected as they are 
by some wonderfully impregnable rampart, namely their harmony. So the harmony, the peace, and the loving relationship is like a fortress that surrounds the whole family so that God can extend his blessing and his grace upon every member of the family. <clears throat> so like Abuna was saying, we're very thankful from the depth of our hearts um, for the, the women and the mothers who are doing this. Um, again, your reward is in heaven. Um, and we can't really like explain. No, there's no amount of word or gift or money that can compare to the gratitude that all of us feel towards our mothers. And and it's uh, it's something that I think... I don't quote normally um, non-Orthodox, but Billy Graham, actually, he said, only God himself can fully appreciate the influence of a Christian mother in the molding of the character in her children. So basically, he's saying only God really understands what the mother is doing and the, the influences that she has to fight against in order to form Christ. Until Just like the church um, works at every end, to, until for Christ is formed in the individual, um, the mothers do the same. and They continue that work at home. That's why the sponsor is so important on the day of baptism, <clears throat> because they are helping the, the church, or they are extension of the church, to help the, the molding of character in the, the child who has to become like Christ. Of course, God works through the Holy Spirit, but he sends people like this. He, the People with the spirit of motherhood, um, whether they are mothers in the flesh or spiritual mothers or fathers who, who mold by the grace of God um, until Christ is perfected in them. <clears throat> so God will reward everyone who, who does this from the heart. Um, and... Uh, Again, truly, that the, the reward is in heaven, but also, as we see every day, the mothers are granted a lot of blessings already. So they have more patience, they have endurance, they have wisdom, they're able to see ahead, you know, potential um, obstacles. Um, they're able to convince um, with, with gentleness, um, whether it's the husband or others, to do what's best for, for the family or for the, the children. So, um, again, God, we can't say um, uh, enough because even we don't understand enough um, what they go through on a, a daily basis. So God reward you 30, 60, 100 fold. And may we take the model of this mothership in, in all of our service, whether in the church or in our family or, or wherever we go. Uh, and glory be to God and I'm to the HRH. We'll pray and then we'll celebrate, continue to celebrate the mothers. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, will God, and then finally, Lord, again, we thank you for everything concerning everything and everything. We thank you for all that you have done for us and all you have given to us, especially the giving us the church, the mother who is nurturing us and supporting us and, and until Christ is formed in us. We ask you to bless this church, to bless every church, to bless everyone who has the spirit uh, of motherhood um, in this world and in the world to come. Help us to grow in you and to be thankful and uh, more have more gratitude for those around us who are serving us with all of their heart, body, mind, and strength. Forgive us for our sins. Lead us in the power of your resurrection until we attain the kingdom of heaven by your grace and blessing. Through the intercession, supplication, and prayers of the mother of us all, the holy Theotokos, St. Mary, and the blessing of the holy resurrection and transfiguration, make us all worthy of Lord to pray thankfully. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Now may the love of God, the Father, the grace of his only begotten Son, our Lord, God, and Savior, Jesus Christ, the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Go in peace, and the peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen.